Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, I want to start my talk by noting the increasing relevance interdisciplinary work has in today's industry. Most, if not all, people require at least two domains of knowledge in order to provide interesting value. This is something we will be seeing more and more in the future. Isolated domains of knowledge, as traditional education has separated them, may have made sense a century ago, but in today's knowledge era, our creative and productive bandwidth grew, and with that, our need to integrate more areas to our skill set in order to provide more integral value to our users. My talk will consist of three parts. First, I'll talk about a new trend in schools called integrated learning. How does it work and why is it so important in today's context? Next, I'll explain why Blender is such a good tool for integrating subject areas. And finally, I will provide examples of how Blender has served me as a mixture of disciplines in my work as an educator. Something I learned early in my professional life as an industrial designer is that in order to be a more interesting and valuable professional, I needed to become interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinarity, in its most basic definition, means applying knowledge from multiple fields. For my first job, I worked at a Mexican startup that developed 3D printers. This was when 3D printers were still kind of something flashy and new. A big project we worked on was on a Kickstarter campaign with the idea of a modular 3D printer with interchangeable print heads. Something that happens when you work in a startup is that the number of hats you wear increase and collaboration between departments gets really tied and intertwined. One sub-project I undertook was the development of a base extruder, a module I could put in the 3D printer to make it print paste materials like peanut butter, Nutella, or chocolate. This project made me aware of how important interdisciplinary work is. Some questions I made myself throughout this project were, from the design perspective, how do I make it user-friendly? From the cooking perspective, is this something that adds value to people who cook? From the engineering perspective, how do we make this system align with the 3 printer actual system? From the materials perspective, how do materials got to be in order to properly print with them? With these, by no means I intend to suggest that professionals should know it all and work in silos and not collaborate, but that knowing a bit or a lot about another discipline will allow for three things to happen. Number one, allow for more creative connections to happen in your work. Number two, seeing problems through the lenses of different disciplines can help you get more get to more creative solutions. And number three, will help you to communicate and empathize with people with those areas of expertise. Now, I've been working in education, more specifically education about design and technology for over eight years now. Two years ago, I got a position in the New England Innovation Academy, a day and boarding school in Massachusetts. Something that caught my eye and uh, made this school a very attractive opportunity for me was their approach to curriculum. This school took a full-on approach towards integration across all subject areas. In the real world, rarely are you using just math or just using science. Think about it, or just using art. This philosophy, where subjects are integrated rather than isolated, improves retention and deepens learning. In practice, these collaborations between curriculums can take form in a variety of really exciting ways. A languages project might team up with the visual arts department to make a magazine, pairing design with the written word. Innovation Studio, the subject that I teach, can bring scientific theory to life in our makerspace. All areas intentionally integrate at various entry points, increasing the relevance and authenticity of learning. Now, as you can see, we do love our Venn diagrams at NIA. And this diagram shows how we integrate all subject areas and how our pillars at the center. And so for the past two years, I've been working within the Innovation Studio Department, which I'll refer from now on as IS, which is a subject in itself that aims to provide students with the mindsets, interpersonal and technical skills required to innovate and provide value to users. And I've been doing this while having the constant ask and personal endeavor of finding organic ways of integrating with other subject areas through meaningful projects. In teaching with this integrated learning concept in mind, I have encountered Blender to be a powerful tool that allows to blend in many topics of a wide range of subject areas. And so I want to share what makes Blender, in my opinion, uh, such a good tool for integration 
and some of the insights I have learned using it in an educational environment. So if you're an educator at any capacity of any kind and, and you believe, as we do at NIA, that integrating uh, knowledge areas provide a more meaningful and real world experience to students, I hope these insights can help you in your practice. To kick it off, Blender's open sourceness. Blender is not a tool that students can only use at the school's computers during a specific class time, but a tool that is always freely accessible for them whenever and wherever. Any tool designed to promote creative work with students shouldn't be restricted to only be used during school time, or worse, during just one class's time. This for the simple reason that creativity happens at different moments for different people. For myself, it happens the most when I relax over long breaks. No wonder it can be hard for students to work creatively in a window of time between science and math class. If we want students to increase their creative output in quantity and quality, we need to allow for those creative tools to be as accessible as a music instrument or as art supplies, something Blender is by default. Blender is a natural sandbox for ideas. And what I mean by that is that it's a place for users to throw things in, play and explore. Blender is a great tool to make theory visible and to have things happen. All subject areas, if you think about it, have theory. But at schools, we seldom see or interact with that theory. Blender allows for that interaction to happen. It allows for showing, not just telling. It is a sandbox in three main ways, as a visualizer, a simulator, and a mixer. As a mixer of media, Blender has the capability to insert many kinds of inputs and play around with them, whereas I've encountered other three softwares being more restrictive uh, with what you're able to import and the actions you can perform with those uh, inputs. Also, Blender allows to then output many other kinds of formats. An example I feel shows this really well is my Halloween costume from two years ago. I wanted to create No Face from Spirit Away. So I imported several images of the character and myself. I play around with them and try different approaches. Out of my design process, I was able to generate STL files for FDM3 printing the mask, vector files for laser cutting wood for the mask support, and a PDF with paper models to print on paper and use as a pattern for my fabric. And uh, with my, my, my non-biased opinion, I think it resulted in a really cool costume. As a visualizer, one day at school during lunch, uh, a student asked me if I thought I could eat 18 burgers in 36 hours. And while I was thinking, another student quickly pulls out his computer, Blender open to show me how 18 burgers, more precisely 18 Big Macs, would look like all together. You know, just for me to have a more informed prediction of my eating capabilities. This for me was really powerful. Having a student quickly array of hamburgers to show the proportion of something made me realize that we have done something right at the school in regards of how students perceived Blender. Uh, whereas instead of being perceived as a fancy sophisticated software only to be used by pros, it is actually more like a sketchbook that you should pull out uh, whenever you want to share an idea or even on making sense of your own ideas. As a simulator, when having a project with students, we try to teach decision-making skills. But in order for our students to make informed decisions, we need them to provide them with the tools to test and simulate the different variables of a situation. Here you see an example of how students were able uh, to simulate and try different lighting temperatures in order to find the most suitable for a room they were designing for a project. Blender in itself encourages play and learning through discovery. My main argument, you might ask, you cannot say a software with a default monkey 3D model is not inviting me to play with it. This example is the first animation of a student, uh, a student made, and as you can see, there's quite some storytelling talent right there. Since, let me show it to you. <laughs> Since play is a key element of learning, my invitation is for you as an educator to become a promoter of play in the classroom. Have the learning outcome at the same hierarchy level as play and enjoyment while you teach. 
you want Blender to become as fun and enjoyable as playing with Play-Doh. Some students learn better with kinesthetic components or just by having a more hands-on experience. Many Blender concepts can be taught with the help of analog materials or movement. Doing this analog work ahead of time can be a catalyst for the later digital work. In class for our project, we needed to learn about UV mapping and how it works. So we created our own cardstock UV map icospheres. Students first generated their UV information, with, which was uh, the unfolded icosahedron, then added texture to it, which implied drawing or pasting cutouts in the unfolded, um, uh, in the in the unfolded icosphere. Uh, lastly, when they folded and built the icosphere, they saw how the texture ended up looking. Doing this activity before doing actual UV mapping in Blender helped uh, the students understand the steps in a more logical and memorable way. As author of the book Lifelong Kindergarten, Mitchell Resnick brilliantly states in his book, good creative tools should have low floors, high ceilings, and white walls. Low floor means that the tools should be easy to start to use. High ceilings means that the tools should allow for high complexity in case a user gets to that level of understanding. Uh, and white walls means that the tools sh should be able to be used in a wide variety of ways. Well, Blender checks all of the boxes. And because of that, it is a tool in which experimentation as well as self-directed discovery and learning should be widely encouraged aiming to have students' knowledge and skills grow in unexpected durations and paces. And when this happens, when the students do outgrow you, number one, it means you're doing things well, and number two, empower your students to teach other students. These examples in the background that I just showed you are all from my students, but they're not academic work, but uh, made in a more tinkering, exploratory way. Um, being that said, now I'll share two projects I've worked on with students that showcase the points I just mentioned. This first project was done with, the, with a group of 10 graders. Um, the selection of topics covering this project ranged from researching social issues and abstraction all the way to clay modeling and digital manufacturing techniques, which made it really interesting. The subjects involved were humanities, visual arts, the makerspace, and IS. In order to get into this project, I have to explain what is an art toy or designer toy, uh, which is a kind of a cultural creation, a bougie plastic or ceramic artwork, a character with a story, with a message, uh, with an own ori original narrative. A case study we wanted to imitate was the one of Gromit Unleashed. Gromit Unleashed was a public charity art trail in which 80 giant artists decorated fiberglass sculptures of Gromit were displayed on the streets of Bristol and the surrounding area in 2013. At the end of the art trail, the sculptures were auctioned to raise funds for Guas and Gromit's grand appeal, the Bristol Children's Hospital Charity. The students started brainstorming different social causes that they felt connected to. They picked one cause to work with, group into, uh, grouped into teams with people who were aligned with them. After this, they did some research on the social issue itself. What's causing it? Who are the different stakeholders? Where are some potential solutions? Etc. Some of the social issues students worked on range from immigration and mental health in the LGBTQ plus community, all the way to ocean and light pollution. After that research, they started brainstorming ideas of sculptures that were aesthetic enough so users would want to have them in their living room, but also peculiar enough that could spark a conversation about the social issue, spreading awareness about it. These are some of their initial concept ideas, which were modeled with clay. Here are some examples of their finished art toy 3D models. Here are the art toys after being 3D printed with their proud designers. And of course, we had to mount our own bougie exhibit. At the moment, we're figuring out the feasibility to run a small production of these art toys to have artists intervene them, sell them, and raise money for charities related to each social cause. The second project is called Build Your Town Project. Also a 10th grade project, the teams during science class had to choose an area of land of the world, then research about that area. What 
wh what are the natural resources in that area? How's the weather there throughout the year? Is it close to a shore? Do we need to store water at some point throughout the year? How the, does the topographic terrain look like? We integrated several analog activities. One of them was having a hands-on approach to zoning your town's area with post-it notes and tape for the roads. We even played a board game called Acropolis in which you have to design your own city and you get points by how well you comply with the needs of the different places like houses, temples, and markets. We then used uh, the Blender uh, GIS uh, add-on to get topographic and satellite information from the selected location. This is how some of the geodata extracted by my students look like in Blender. Places like Iceland, Monaco, and Singapore were featured. Then from the geodata, we transformed to Mesh. From Mesh, we exported to STL. And from the STL, we slide with 1 to 3D, one, one to 3D Make to create laser cut files to be able to build the topographic map. After getting out laser cut cardboard, we glued and painted our maps. With a bit of help of AI, we got rid of the civilization from the texture that needed it. Here's an example. On the left, you can see uh, the texture that were extracted from the satellite information with the civilization. On the right, how it looks without it. We also learned how to make city things like buildings and streets uh, multiply into a grid. As well as how to make trees spawn randomly and grow using particle systems and animation. Based on the research, they started 3D modeling assets for their town, from houses and town halls to public furniture and bridges. Based on their zoning, their research, and their assets, they are now working on building their actual town. Now the big question is, how do we take this off the screen? And so with the help of some wood and a really cheap projector, we were able to make a project mapping setup. Um, some of the end products of this project are project mapping animations of the students' urban plans coming to life on top of their topographic maps, as you can see in the video here. Um, and now, I believe that we all uh, are educators at some capacity, whether you're in a physical classroom or you make tutorials or even if you share your skills with your team at work. My main invitation is for you to embrace the fun of learning, combine the analog with the digital, and open your work to the integration of different disciplines. Thank you.